Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Free Radicals by WizKids. It plays two to five players, ages 14 and up, and it takes roughly about 90 minutes to play. Unless you're playing with more than three players, then it takes a bit longer. <laughs> In the game Free Radicals, you're playing asymmetric gameplay. And what that means is you're going to be choosing a faction, and there's multiple different sides to the faction, and uh, you're going to be doing a special mini game while playing a main game all at the same time. Uh, each of the different factions has a different way of playing with different components, but it all compromises on playing with gathering these buildings, gaining value on resources, taking new cards that are called data cards, and gaining knowledge on that track there. At the end of the game, you're going to score points for all the items you have, any points you've gathered from the knowledge track, and uh, additional things like having the most or furthest markers, having the most uh, cubes from other players, etc, etc. And whoever has the most points after 12 rounds is the winner. Free Radicals is a game that has quite a bit of options to them with unique types of gameplay. Now, as an example, have you played any games that remind you of Free Radicals? I don't know, have I? I don't know. Have you played a deck builder? Yes. Have you played a puzzle game? Mm -hmm. How about a pick up and deliver game? I don't think so. What about an action management game? What is action management? Maybe it's more like a worker placement or a euro. Yes. Then you've played Free Radicals. You might not have played all of them, but you've played some of them. That's how this game works. Select your faction and your type of gameplay and then work to collect as much victory points as possible with your gameplay. Let's talk about how the game is set up, but not fully because there's way too much to discuss. Talk about how the game is played, but not fully because there's way too much to discuss. And then we'll do our review. You ready? Yes. So the setup for Free Radicals is actually quite simple, but complex at the same time. And complexity meaning that each of the different player boards that you're going to get in the game board, uh, on the game, are going to have a unique stylization to them. Maybe you're playing a pick up and deliver game, maybe you're playing a puzzle game, uh, maybe you're playing a deck builder. Uh, but what isn't different is the setup for the main game board. The first thing you'll note on this board here is on the far left hand side, which is the... Victory points. And what do you, what's the point of these guys here? That's how you win. Yeah, whoever gets the farthest along this track at the end of the game is the winner. There's also this little area here, it goes from 1 to 12. Those are the rounds. Yes, the rounds. And after the 12th round, as you would progress to the next round, instead you stop and you'll total up victory points. It'll tell you the furthest along the knowledge track will get you points, however many cubes you have, uh, for each set of cubes you have, and then for every item you have after three, or for each three, you're going to victory point. Then you get all these guys here. What are those guys? Those are buildings. What do you do with them? You can visit them, and you can also own the building. Yeah, you can awaken right? them, and you'll gain these little spots on the board so that when people visit your building, you get something. Yes. And it tells you on the track what you get, tells you what action you get when you visit it, and there's a unique special action, which is rarely a thing you're going to see happen, but when it does, you'll get to do the specific action for your faction on the board. There's cards up here. What are those cards? What's the point of them? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Those are data cards, right? Yeah, they're data cards. Um, you can claim those cards and then that's how you can awaken the building. Yep, when you claim them, you'll pay the cost on them and then you're going to utilize the card, if you can, to uh, claim a building. There's four of them that go down here. You're going to get points on the victory track marker at zero and then the first player of the round is going to be the person who places a cube on the round tracker. This area over here is called the knowledge area. You got one cube for each player on the zero track there. What is that for? Um, that you can choose to push yourself or somebody else um, along the track and then you'll get points for that and yeah, you have to pay either money or resources. Yeah, and if you push them along from one to two and two to three, you'll also gain some of their cubes. What are the cubes called? Do you remember what those are called, these guys here? The favor? favor cubes, that's right. And you're trying to gain favor from other people. Your favor cubes are not important to you, but they're very important to other players because they need your cubes to accumulate more than anybody else in the, end of the game and they'll be used for sets. Each of the different player boards has their own unique setup and there's the rule book explaining the base mode of the game, which is basically all of this and how the game takes place in turns. And then for each of the players, you're gonna have your own unique setup. So in one, it might be to place all your tokens on one side of the board, take a deck of cards and draw five and then gain a certain number of resources. And for another, it might be something more complex like the uh, this one here, the was pick up and deliver where you're gonna be getting delivery cards, different action costs, action management costs, your trains or planes, moving them around the board, etc., etc., and they're all explained how to play, and there's quite a large variety of them. 
So anyway, that's the basic idea of setup. Choose your faction, do what the, the page says based on your faction, there's 10 of them, and then set the board up as I've explained. And we'll get into gameplay as well, which is gonna be kind of lackadaisical as well. So the gameplay is fairly simple. Everyone has their own actions that they do. Um, so, for example, I had the blue character, the couriers, and I basically had five actions. You take your guy and you place it around the board, and then it comes back to one location at the end. And everyone has their own different actions that they do. Um, on their own board and then you can also do stuff on this board too with the buildings and with um, getting knowledge. As well as maybe drawing some data cards that you can use mm -hmm. to awaken buildings. And so yes, each player takes uh, their actions. It tells you exactly what to do on your board here on the top right or top left depending on what side you're playing on. You go through all those steps and then it's the next player's turn. They go through all their steps, next player's turn, rinse and repeat until all the players have taken their turns. Another thing to note too in this game is if you're not utilizing a specific color, those cubes, everything's still going to exist for that player as far as the supply goes. Their favor is going to exist, but they as a character will not. So you can still gain favor from purple, you can still move purple's knowledge up, but they're not gonna have a point score and you're not gonna be doing a turn for them obviously. But just to let you know that their presence is still there on the board and you can still activate all the different locations that might have their color as well. After everybody gets their turn, we take this marker and we move it to two. And then we'll take another turn and we'll move it to three and we'll go all the way to 12. And after the 12th round, like I said before, we score. And that's the entire game. It's actually really quite simple. Now to review the game. What did you think of the gameplay? Well, the gameplay is actually really cool. I like asymmetrical games. I've played a game kind of like this called Merchant's Cove, where each player has their own mini game that they're playing. Uh, with Merchant's Cove, they're all kind of like puzzle games, though. They're, they do have some unique twists to them as far as like, are you using balls to maneuver on the board? Are you creating like different diagrams and whatnot? This one here has actually got multiple different types of games, like mini games attached to the main game. The main game is all about resource management and gathering favor, and gaining victory points, and then each individual game is different. I, for instance, I played in one game as the uh, guys here, these are the underground, and they are a deck building faction. You draw cards, you play those cards, you upgrade your units, you use the units abilities that they have based on what they've upgraded to. Then you got like the adventurers here. It's kind of like a dungeon crawl where you move your characters around a game board, gather resources using action points and moving characters around whether it be onto this um, recon space or as a character on the board somewhere and then this one over here is basically like a euro placing your character out into one of the locations and then performing any stall actions that might be there and you'll be gaining stall actions from the locations as well and if you don't have any stall actions you'll have three cubes which you'll be utilizing uh, on the specific row that you choose to do any three actions paying the cost or just gaining the benefits after that, your turn will be over. That one over there is yes. Like you explained, pick up and deliver. You'll take your characters and you move them along the game board based on where the roads take you. And you're gonna go ahead and drop them off. Boop, boop, boop. You'll gather all the benefits to the spaces as long as you can afford to do so. And then you'll move them off. And as you move them off, you'll gain the other benefits as long as you're able to do so. You're gonna be gathering, collecting storage units, turning those storage units uh, in with the cards that you have based on the location that those cards require you to turn them in at and scoring victory points that way. In addition to everything you do on the game board. And then over there on that last side is basically Candy Crush. You place the tiles down, you collect uh, victory points based on the tiles that you chose and any connecting or matching tiles that they connect with. And you can also utilize a build action before you do so. And then at the end of your turn, you have the option of um, taking these, this guy here as well. Uh, and that's the idea of the game. Uh, it, what's, what also I also like about gameplay is these cards here. So these function very well, the data cards. Uh, these you're only gonna get to use if they're your color. Now, if not, you can discard them or they have other benefits, but to actually awaken buildings, they must be of the color that is yours. And so only the blue and the red player can actually use this card to awaken a building. You'll gain victory points based on the bottom of the card if you can afford it, and you'll actually gain the building with your cubes provided it's your color and that the spaces have not been taken up. So in this case here, where is this one here? Over here, I can gain one of these spaces if I can afford this guy here. Um, and it's a nice little twist. You're thinking about what tiles are available. You're thinking about, uh, do you have the access to the resources and are the cards gonna be the right colors for you? All the while you're playing your own mini game. So you're kind of focusing on the buildings here and then worrying about your own board. There's not a lot of, uh, 
factions that kind of attack other players or mess with other players' boards so much. But because of the favor, there's a lot of interacting. I want one of your cubes, you can give me one of your cubes. I can give you resources for cubes and whatnot, depending on what you're playing as. The merchant has a lot of trading involved with it. Uh, other players are going to be working on pushing people's knowledge trackers up. So basically a lot of the uh, between play, like we work we work together or work against each other, is going to be based on these. Does she take the card I want? Does she push me up on the track? Does she push somebody else up on the track? And I, I really dug that about this game. Yeah, that was probably my favorite part of the game um, with the favor, accumulating other people's cubes and trying to help other people along the track. I really liked that part of it too, that you can help other people and it also benefits you too. Yeah, g gaining favor, whether it be for yourself or anybody else, will gain you victory points, has a cost to it, and at the end of the game, if you're farthest along, you're gonna get victory points as well. And sometimes there's a benefit to helping somebody else as opposed to yourself, because as you push players from the one space uh, from the zero to the one or from the one to the two, you're going to also gain their favor tokens. You'll be able to get cards here. Some factions can't get cards as easily as others. And so you're kind of pushing other players along in order to increase your value, so to speak. And so most of the time, these favors are all going to be very evenly aligned. Nobody's going to be a little bit farther than another player until, I guess, like the end of the game. Um, and yeah, that's that's a good thing as well. What about the buildings? What do you think about awakening buildings? Paying the cost of the cards, gaining the building location. So the buildings were really hard to get in the beginning. I felt like I couldn't, I'm like, this is impossible. I can't afford anything. But as you build up your character, you'll, your characters basically will get stronger and it will be easier to get the building. So I feel like at the end, like you can get a lot of victory points from the big, from the buildings if you're able to build up to that. And I think it's based on the player too, right? The player board or the, the faction, I mm -hmm. should say, because some are more of a ramp up. Mine and Alicia's are a ramp up. My deck builder starts off slow. I have five different actions or 10 different actions to get based on the cards that I have. Alicia's has a certain number of actions, but they have a cost to them and she doesn't have a lot of resources to start the game off with. And so she's not going to be able to do them. So she's gonna to have to work up to them. And as she works up, she gets more resources. Using those more resources grants her more actions and thusly lets her get more victory points. Whereas other players, like the puzzler, is going to just get stuff. They play things, they get stuff. They choose an action they want to do, whether it just be build a building or whether it be get resources. And so they have the option to start building buildings a lot sooner. And uh, the dungeon player, they start off with a lot of stuff and they start getting more stuff and it gets more challenging to get more stuff, but not impossible to do so as the board expands and new tiles get unleashed and more monsters are there to fight. And the same with the worker placement. It's all about how you build, and there's a slow ramp to that one as well. So the ramp up is kind of involved in this game, but not in every faction. Some get a little bit of a head start. Sometimes you might see somebody very far along the board for victory points, and it might de derail you a bit, but realize that it might just be that your faction's taking a little bit longer to ramp up, and by the time that the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds hit, you might start getting more and more points. And if you pay attention to the end of game victory scoring, that can net you a lot as well. Artwork, what do you think? Um, I like the artwork. Uh, I think the, like for my board, it the colors made it easier to um, see which area you're in. So I like that because it made it easier. And I feel like it's a very like techy looking theme. Um, I like how bright the colors are. Yeah, they got vivid, bright mm -hmm. colors. This is one of those games where I look at the art and when you first see it, you're like, that's really cool. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and if I just were to glance at it and be like, oh, let me see the game. Oh, artwork's great. Um, but it has one little slight flaw with it. And that is that not all of the artwork is as excellent as some of the artwork. And it comes down to when you look at the box directly or when you look at the board directly, there's certain pieces that I like more than others. And they, they do feel like they match to an extent, but they're also kind of displaced as well. Like the characters on the board, I feel like these are kind of pasted on. They're not actually part of the scenery. Or maybe this board over here is more representative of, as uh, icons than just simply being uh, for the art's sake. And there's a lot of symbols in this game, and so I give it a big break because you need to have those symbols because there's so many different factions. But it's just something I noticed with the artwork. It's like 90% really good art. 
which I, I guess is still good art, right? It's, 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 definitely, it's definitely in the top tier art category, and I do like it. I do like vi vi uh, bright, 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 vivid artwork. I feel like that is, is essential to a lot of these games, especially when it comes to different colors and you want to know where you want to go. Uh, having your roads be different colors, having each of these different uh, columns here be different colors to illustrate which type of faction you're going to be working with, and it works like that for all boards. Each each board works with other players' factions, and you need to have those colors all arranged with it. And of course, all the buildings look really great. All the character design is really nice as well. So artwork is solid. Uh, quality of the game, also great. Quality of the game is, I would say, excellent. It's even resistant to pizza stains. <laughs> all <laughs> of the cubes are very nice. All of the standees work well. All of the character design is great for the different boards, and it feels well to play um, with the pieces that you are utilizing. And this main board here, while it looks very, the game looks very intimidating, really all you're doing is looking at one, two, three sections of the main board, and then you have your game, and that's all you need to know. Everything else is kind of arbitrary. You don't even need to know how other people play their game. So that kind of makes things a little easier as well. Yeah, I do have to say, um, my goods pieces, I didn't realize at first that they're actually supposed to match these colors, because at first I was like, oh, this is pink and this is orange, but actually this is supposed to be red, that's supposed to be purple, and they're supposed to match. Yeah, so but I didn't e each of the that. different factions have the other colors, mm -hmm. other colored factions on their board. Yeah, so I, I just wish that the colors matched a little better. Ah, uh, and ink issue or something like that, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, that's true. Did, did it affect gameplay at all, or would you just have liked to have known that they, like... No. Um, cause I, I realized later on, so it didn't really affect it that much, but. Yeah. So, but yeah, overall quality of the game, I thought they did a good job. Yeah, there's some, I guess, some color issues to it, but I, if that's the only complaint, then I, I suppose you're doing a, a good job, right? Yes. Um, and we'll talk about the game specifically, uh, cause I think a game like this, the most important people want to know is how balanced is it? And that is a hard question to answer. That requires a lot of playthrough. But what I can say is that for the most part through our games, the scoring was fairly in the same category. There might be one person who jumps up way ahead or one that's a little bit farther behind, but you have to learn each of your different classes. Um, what I can say is it's a bit jumbled, I suppose. That could be the main negative of the game is there's just a lot going on. If you're trying to pay attention to everything, you're not going to be able to do so because there's just so many different characters, so many different player boards and factions doing certain things. You're not going to be able to pay attention to each of their actions as well as you probably would like to while also taking your turn. What is nice, though, is you can kind of set up your turn in advance. With my faction, for instance, I drew my cards, I would set up the order in which I would like to play those cards, I'd lay them out for the next turn, and then I would be ready to do them. Not a whole lot matters as far as this board goes, only maybe these cards here and the cards in the deck over there. But for the most part, you're focusing on your own game boards, so you're not, for, you're not forced to wait until it's your turn to do things, which can speed the game up. And I strongly suggest you do so because the other little qualm I have is the game can be very long at five players. I think it's probably best at five players because you're not playing with any factions that don't actually have a role other than just have favor. And it gives you a little bit more of in-depth of all the different types of styles of the characters and whatnot. So when you play again, you'll be able to be like, ah, oh, that's the faction that I liked, whereas mm -hmm. I don't like this one. Because you're definitely gonna have different factions that you will not want to play again. Yeah, I feel like I would want to try the green character because I love, I love the worker placement. Yes. Yeah, you move around, you select one of these, and then you take your actions and you place them on there, and you get the benefits of the action. She likes euros. She likes worker placement, and this one functions like that, whereas the other ones don't. You've got to pick up and deliver worker placement, dungeon crawl, deck builder, and a puzzler. And it's five different games all mixed into one big game. So it can it be a jumbled mess at times. Yes, it, it definitely can be. And especially if you're trying to look at everybody's board. But if you're just playing your own game, then what you're doing is you've got a mix of a favor and a knowledge builder, resource management tucked into a tight little neat deck builder or pick up and deliver. And very, very simple, very, very straightforward. But with a ton of different choices, I can see it being a little more complex. I mean, did you focus on people's other people's turns, what they were doing? No, I couldn't because I spent all of my time like planning in advance what my turn would look like. Which is exactly what you're supposed to yeah. do. It doesn't matter what they're doing on their board. It's not going to affect you really. And even if you don't get the cards you want here, there's still the deck and still new ones come out anyway. Overall though, Free Radicals, did you like it? Would you play it again? What factions would you rather like to choose? Yeah, I would play it again. I would like to see um, the green character that yeah. does the 
um, worker, worker placement. placement. Yeah. I'd also like to see the other blue characters, see how that compares. Yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, I, I like the deck builder. It's a slow ramp. I'd probably rather play the puzzler, I think. The worker placement, for sure. The dungeon crawler one seems pretty fun as well. And there's five others to choose from on the mm -hmm. opposite ends of these boards with different components that you can play with. So I'm not giving you all the spoilers for all the characters, but you're going to get half of them from here, basically. <laughs> and uh, there is a large variety to that. And it does feel good to be able to choose the different characters. Each time you play this game, it will be different because you will literally be playing a different game. Uh, mm -hmm. Unlike other games where it's like, it'll be different because you're having a unique terrain set. No, this is going to be different because you're literally playing a different game each time you play it with the full like base module here that you're doing by giving favor and moving around buildings and collecting resources and whatnot and moving your victory tracks. Like all this is kind of irrelevant. This is half the time irrelevant. And this is maybe like one fifth the time relevant. These are pretty much what you're gonna be using here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, overall, an excellent little game. I enjoyed myself fully. Uh, I'm sure that this is going to be one of those things what you will like or you won't like. It's a lot of rules, a lot of time to play the game. Uh, it can be a little wonky or fidgety trying to figure out all the exact uh, rulings on some of these things because there's not a whole lot of errata. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. What do you What do you think? Like people who are going to enjoy this game, is it something for everybody's or Yeah, bombs? I definitely think there is something for everyone, especially since there are different mini games you can choose from. So you can choose like what you're good at. If you're good at puzzles, you can go for that. If you're good at deck builders, you can do that one. So yeah, I feel like there's something for everyone. Is there a qualm you have or a negative or something that would people would, would turn people off from playing this game? No. <laughs> no? Not even the length? You okay with the length too? Um, I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm not usually bothered by long games. I like playing games, so it's okay if it's long to me. Okay, well then, there you got it. So overall, it was a fun game, something you'd play again. Yeah. You recommend this for kids, adults, teenagers? What do you think? Grandma, grandpa? <laughs> Probably adults. I feel like this would be too complex for kids. I, I, I agree. So if yeah. you're interested, adults out there, Free Radicals <laughs> from WizKids, an asymmetrical board game with a theme that works pretty well and functions really nicely, and I had a lot of fun playing it. So if you're interested, there's a link down below where you can pick up the game. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you want to see more videos, check out the channel and see all the rest of our videos here. We play games just like this one all the time. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button and, of course, uh, the subscribe button so that way you can see our videos. We produce them Monday through Friday and we have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games like Free Radicals on the stream. We give away games. We do a lot of fun stuff. If you want to join us there, you can see the games, watch us play it, and that might help you determine if it's something for you. It's even better than a review because you can kind of see what the game is doing, how people feel about the game. You might not be able to play it, but you get an idea of how it is played and whether or not people would like it because we have a lot of people that jump on the stream and say what they want <laughs> about the games and um, that's pretty much it if you're interested in the free radicals like i said link down below by whiz kids i have a lot of fun with this one this one's going to stay in my collection for quite some time because i like asymmetrical games and i only have two of them now so now i have a choice between this one and the merchant's cove this one's a little bit quicker setup so i think We'll be jumping on this one a little bit more, even though I liked Merchant's Cove a little better. It's something she'll probably want to play as well. Callie loves that game. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to being a free radical with you next time. <sighs> okay, and then the review. You want to start us off? What do I pick it, just pick a category. Okay, now to review the game. Oh. <laughs> and then what category? <laughs> Doesn't matter, you pick anyone you want. You got pizza on my board. <laughs> Ew, and you're licking it. I'm removing it. That's gross. It's gonna go in the B-roll. <laughs> Please don't. Of course not.